Uh, does the National Guard have authority to assist the Capitol Police on its own accord? It does not, Congressman. It requires the Secretary of Defense to approve support to uh, federal law enforcement. But if the Secretary of Defense says go down to the Capitol, can they do it without being asked? We need to have a request first from those entities, and those requests were asked for uh, if, if there was needed support in the days leading up to 6 January, and we were told they, they were not need any support. So you can't just show up at the Capitol and say, I want to provide help. You have to be asked by the Capitol Police? Yes, Congressman. So you have to be requested. And as you mentioned, uh, the Pentagon had asked the Capitol Police if they needed help leading up, um, needed help from the National Guard leading up to January 6th, uh, it's my understanding, uh, they were asked on December 31st, 2020, if they needed any assistance? I'm trying, uh, we got the request from the mayor, Mayor Bowser was drafted on 31st of December. The request from DOD to the Capitol Police if they needed any assistance came on the 3rd, and then on the 4th, the Secretary of the Army asked the Capitol Police if they needed assistance, and they replied they did not. On each occasion? On each occasion, sir. Okay. And had the Capitol Police asked for help on any of the occasions prior to that, you would have been able to have people on the ground at the Capitol on January 6th before anything happened? That is our recommendation. We, we should have had this plan before January 6th. That way we would have had a lead federal agency and an integrated security plan. I, what, I, what we wanted to make clear is that we should have been prepared. We should have had an integrated security plan. We should have had a lead federal agency. Those requests did not come in. In the time to respond to a crisis, uh, sadly, when it was occurring, we just couldn't get there in time. We just were not in position. Irving, uh, why was the request for National Guard assistance not approved at the same time you approved the expansion of the perimeter? His son called me to tell me that he had received an offer from the National Guard to provide us 125 unarmed troops to work traffic control in the perimeter of the Capitol. The three of us talked it through, and during that call, the number one question on the table was, did the intelligence support it? Did the intelligence support that additional offer for those 125 troops? During that call, we all agreed that the intelligence did not support the the uh, troops and collectively decided to let it go. My, my, my. My colleagues across the aisle are going to find themselves in a bind this year because we're going to investigate. We're going to investigate what exactly did happen leading up to January the 6th. You'd have had to be living under a rock in America to not know that there was potential for violence, riot, and mob behavior on January the 6th. Anybody with an ounce of common sense and any kind of connection to the street knew that that was a potential. The United States Capitol Police received intelligence from numerous law enforcement and intelligence services which clearly indicated the likely, a likelihood of violence on January 6th, and they failed to adequately prepare. Let's look at why. Mayor Browser. My goodness. December 31st, she had one tone when she requested the cooperation of the D.C. National Guard. Now, let me clarify, the, the commanding general of the D.C. National Guard is subordinate solely to the president. The authority to activate the D.C. National Guard has been delegated by the president to the Secretary of Defense and further delegated to the Secretary of the Army. There's a chain of command. It be, begins with a request from the mayor. The mayor made that request on December 31st. The, the president authorized it on January the 3rd, but on January the 5th, Mayor Browse of D.C., who's deeply connected with my Democratic co colleagues here in this body, she had a change of heart, sent out a letter. So we don't want any National Guardsmen here. I got National Guardsmen just for traffic control, wearing safety vests, unarmed, working traffic control and, 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 and crowd control here and there in the city. Certainly not pre-deployed, pre to react and respond quickly 
to the kind of thing that everybody knew was a potential to happen on January the 6th. So what happened? Were there communications between my colleagues and the Democratic Party and their friend, the mayor of D.C., to have that change of heart the day before January the 6th? We're going to find out. I promise you. Director Ray, will you explain to my colleagues what in law enforcement, what a show of force deterrence is, how meaningful it is, and how effective it is as we deal with potential for violence, mob behavior, rioting, uh, violent protest, when things can get out of hand, and we know it because of our intel, we have a show of force. Would you explain that? My understanding is that the, a visible show of strength uh, and security is a very, very significant factor. In a very significant violence. factor. I concur. Why do you think, America, why do you think that show of force was canceled the day before January the 6th? I promise you we're going to find out. We will know exactly what happened. And some in this body are not going to like it. Because there was, there was plenty of intel out there across the country. Many, many field agents had turned in reports at the federal level, local law enforcement, the boots on the ground knew that there was potential for violence in a mob born of protest in a nation that had been locked out of its capital for a year. There was potential. It needed to be controlled. Show of force is a peaceful deterrent. Who could possibly benefit let the world ask that question. Who could possibly benefit from the removal of a show of force deterrence on the eve of, of January the 6th? A week before, one week before, the week prior to the insurrection, I started to get text messages that I needed to be careful. And that in particular, I needed to be careful about the 6th. And, you know, Sunday, then the insurrection happened Wednesday. So there was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I probably started getting text messages about um, having me having plans um, for my safety or me trying to figure something out about Thursday. Um, and those text messages came from other members of Congress. Um, and those text messages came from other members of Congress. Um, and those text messages came from other members of Congress. Um, not, they were not threats, but they were other members saying that they knew um, and that they were hearing even from Trump people and Republicans um, that they knew in their life that there was violence expected on Wednesday.